Hi everybody, it's Christine Bertram. I'm coming to you live from the hive, weirdly, for a class on a Tuesday. And I think that I'm gonna count this as my tip Tuesday for today, you guys. Uh, we'll be live for about an hour and a half and I feel like you're gonna get lots of wonderful tips in this class, <laughs> so we're gonna go with that. So no extra tip Tuesday for you guys today. Um, so we have the Let's Just Stamp class. You guys, normally this would have been yesterday, but because I was traveling back from where was I traveling from yesterday? We left from Sandusky, Ohio yesterday. Um, we are going to be doing the class today instead. So um, all the kits, I believe, have been mailed out. Uh, for those people who had registered uh, prior to basically before me leaving, uh, and I don't know if anybody signed up for it since I left, but you guys, there are some kits left for this class. I'm trying to uh, find me with you guys so I can watch along and answer any comments you have for some reason. It didn't automatically pop up like it normally does. So where would we go here? Under posts. Hi, Betty Pyle. Hi, Cindy Runtree. So here we go. Oh, I bet I don't have my internet. You guys, it's like I'm out of the loop here for a little bit. <laughs> Kelly did the mystery card night with you guys last week, Thursday. Um, if you missed it, go back and watch it. I just shared the links this morning so that you could find them easily. Um, if you're part of my Stampin' Game Night group or if you're part of my VIP group, uh, there it is. I had to get on the internet in the hive and just like that, it came up. Perfect, okay, so who else do we have here? We have Randy and Carla, awesome. Okay, hi Lisa Spacek. So if you guys, um, if you, I'm not, <laughs> it's weird, Mystery Car Night. Um, I sent the email too with the links to watch it. If you guys missed out on watching it live with Kelly, you can always watch the replay. It's out there on YouTube now and it's on Facebook. You can catch it in the video section um, on my channel or on the Facebook group um, page. Um, you have until tomorrow night. Hi, Cindy Hutchings. Hi, Stacey Warner. Hi, Donna Simmer. You guys have until tomorrow night around 11 or midnight to submit your cards if you want to get in on the drawing. And we're going to do the drawing um, live on Thursday night after class. And so we have the monthly card making class this Thursday. So you guys, oh, I just thought of it too. We have Friday. It's the celebration celebration. So thanks, Carla Cordes. Um, I'm glad to be back too. Um, you guys, we have three online classes for you this week and Kelly will be doing a Technique Thursday. So wow, lots of stuff coming your way this week. Um, woo -hoo, good stuff. So we're gonna get started in just a little bit, but I did wanna, it, I feel like I've been out of the loop a little bit. Um, I've been trying to catch up, or mm, I should say send out emails about what classes are coming up. Um, I do uh, plan to kit up a bunch this week, you guys. Mom's gonna be here right after this class is done at three, um, my time, and we're gonna be kitting up game night, um, which is also known as Lucky Hand. If you're doing the online version, it's game night. If you're doing the in-person version, it's called Lucky Hand. Thanks for sharing, Betty. I appreciate it. Thanks, Randy, for sharing. You guys, I appreciate it so much when you share uh, the videos. Hi, Debbie Schultz, uh, Buzzy at work. <laughs> um, so um, we're gonna be kidding up game night this afternoon. So for all of you guys that have signed up for game night, guess what? They'll be in the mail tomorrow and I will have a PDF for you soon as well. I'm gonna try to do the PDF either tomorrow or Thursday um, versus waiting. I mean, class is Monday night, right? So game night online is Monday night. Um, I still have about eight or nine kits left unaccounted for. So if you guys think you missed out on game night, just let me know and we can make sure that that gets in the mail too. Even if you don't get the kits in time for class, you can always just um, make them at your own convenience and play along with the games too. So, all right, I just realized I didn't update my host code on the little sheet here. Let's see how easily I can find it. Um, uh, sometimes it's easy to find that <laughs> and sometimes not so bad, it's not, not so easy. Um, oh man, so I know it was there, so let's find the easiest way to get it. So game night is gonna be kitted up this afternoon and then also, you guys, um, before I forget, I gotta tell you, there's a 24-hour stamp sale, too. I just found out about it this morning. Hi, Linda Kester, just found out about it. So, just a side note, it's going to be the 15th, which is Thursday. It's all day long, 24 hours. Oh, Cindy, perfect, ah, I love it. I appreciate that. Um, J-N-G-K, oops. JK, hang on, 
I'm gonna have a little shmeary shmeary here. J-N-G-J, perfect, thanks for sharing it. And then K-C-R-X. So when I haven't done a class for a couple weeks, you guys, it feels like it was September 1st, it's almost <laughs> two weeks. I forget all the little intricacies of things I do. And so now when you guys see the camera flip down, I'll have the code there. So I'll talk about other classes that I'm kidding up this week, but I was telling you about the 24 hour sale. Um, it's gonna be select stamp sets out of the annual catalog, and it's going to be, it doesn't say what discount they're gonna get, but again, it's September 15th on Thursday. As soon as I get a list, oh, Carla Lake, you, you might need to get in on game night. That might be true. I don't know if I have you down yet. Send me an email, Carla, and we'll make sure that we get you signed up for game night. I have about 10 spots open yet. Um, we're kidding them up today. And if you let me know for sure today, I can make sure they get in the mail tomorrow. Uh, so it starts at, um, it starts in the morning. Oh, 15%. It says it right here. 15% discount will apply to select stamps from the annual catalog. Um, the list of stamps that are included in the sale will be ready to, uh, um, ready soon. As soon as I have it, you guys, I will email it. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. Um, Randy just said it too. Awesome. You guys, it's 15%. Um, Jean, we made it back safe and sound. So for everybody, I met up with Jean Terwilliger in uh, Pennsylvania on Sunday for some coffee with her husband and Tyler. And we had a little chit chat and got to catch up. It was awesome. Hi, Sharon Henson. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, so yeah, so this damn still, you guys. Hi, Cheryl Thomas from Ohio. Um, I will email about it. So if you guys aren't part of my email group and you would like some information on my classes and stuff like this when sales come out. Hi, Anna Rubidoux is no, it's not all the stamps, Anna. It says, um, it says the 15% discount will apply to select stamps from the 2022 to 2023 annual catalog. So it is not all the stamps. So I don't, I don't think it's all of them because they said select stamps. Um, hi, Vera. Sounds good. If you want to make the catch the replay, that's awesome. Um, so I'll email. So if you guys aren't on my email list, you can always sign up to receive emails from me by going to my website, cardsbycrispy.com, which you'll see it when I flip the camera down and you just sign up for my emails. Um, hi, Deb Norman. I just sent you a note right before uh, we started class. We have two address updates for the bees. And so I wanted to make sure you saw that. Okay, so back to what's going on this week. On Thursday, then, Mom and I are going to be kidding up Splendid Thoughts, Ink, Paper, Scissors, and Rustic Harvest. And just to give you guys an idea of where I'm at with card kits that are left, I have about maybe 15 or 20 of Ink, Paper, Scissors that I'm planning for that aren't accounted for. And Rustic Harvest, you guys, I'm only down to eight or seven um, out of 80. So if you need to get signed up for those, let me know. I will, when I flip the camera down, I think I'm gonna run through those classes really quick because I did the showcase video for September way back, the third week of August, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a while since I've shown all the cards. So I think before we do class today, I will roll through all that. Uh, and so that's awesome. The other thing too, you guys, the benefit cards are not done yet. Um, once the benefit cards are done, I will absolutely do a separate special video just to show the benefit cards. So the benefit is for um, our OUR, which is Operation Underground Railroad. And they are uh, an organization that helps to combat and fight against human trafficking and sex trafficking. And um, we have 20 people signed up already, which is awesome. Uh, we have two people that already purchased the raffle tickets for the event ahead of time too, which is awesome. Um, and hi, Ann Bellinger. Uh, and just to let you guys know, I did have a couple people reach out to me and ask about uh, these criminal investigations that are going on against this organization. And I guess in a nutshell, what I want to tell you guys is that any organization or person that goes out and fights against this kind of behavior and this kind of stuff that's happening, they're going to be targeted and blacklisted and gone after. And so I did my due diligence and I reached out to a few people. Um, one of them is a, a prosecutor that has been prosecuting these um, uh, powerful and influential people that have been, um, uh, I, I guess, had, they were part of the, the rings, right, that, that go on. And these people will do anything and everything to combat or stop them from being caught or being persecuted or pro like, like the, what, like, I'm not a legal law person, but like from being put in jail, <laughs> let's say that. So, uh, uh, hi, Rhonda Ayers. So if you do look that up and see that there are criminal investigations, I guess I wouldn't be surprised. And I did see that. And I still decided to go forward with this organization because 
any organization that helps to fight this kind of activity and behavior is in my eyes a, a good worthy cause and i did reach out to two people that are involved with this organization and they vouched for them so uh so deb that's interesting um Hi, Becky Schlossnagel from Pennsylvania. Woohoo, I was just in Pennsylvania. So Deb, that's very interesting. If you get an email from that other demonstrator and it says that, I don't think it's accurate because in the demonstrator a website, it says that it's select stamps. So just like Anna had thought it was everything, maybe there's an implication that it thinks, you know, we think it's everything, but if you read the fine print, it says select stamps. So um, it, maybe we need clarification from Stampin' Up! to understand if it's everything in the annual catalog that's stamp related or if it is um, if it is select stamp. So we'll have to do a little homework. Hi, Sandy Z Dune. Okay, so back to the our organization, you guys. Just, you know, I, I, I know that it might be, you might see that and it might lead you to be like, oh, maybe I don't want to donate. But you know what? The benefit is uh, for what I believe is a good cause and that's what we picked this time. And of the $25 donation, um, five of it goes to the making of the cards and 20 of it is what we're giving up, which would have been the cost, you know, for the class per se, we are donating that to the organization that we choose. So I really hope that you guys would consider donating the, for the benefit and it's October 1st, which is world card making day. And again, as soon as I have the cards ready to go, um, we will, I will do a Facebook live and I will share those cards with you and give you some more details. And um, Bonnie's already got about 16 baskets ready for the raffle, which is awesome. And you don't have to be local to do the raffle. Um, I would be willing to, you know, pitch in for shipping. Um, or um, if you picked prizes that were smaller, like I would definitely pay for shipping for you to get the prize if you win it um, so that it doesn't prohibit you from doing the, the raffle as well. So, um, Hi, Sandy. I'm not sure what you're asking what is going on. <laughs> I was just talking about the card benefit and the organization that I picked uh, for the card um, for the benefit. So um, so one of the gals that vouched for the, the organization, she's a nurse and she uh, works with uh, inmates, women inmates who have been either sexually abused or um, in these sex trafficking rings. And she says that she, these these people talk about it. Um, that it's a real thing and any benefit or any organization that we pick that helps to counteract that or combat that kind of activity is, is a great organization to choose. So, um, my demonstrator has the list and posted it. I believe it is a select list, but it's long. Oh, Jean Terwilliger. Perfect. So Jean just confirmed that there is a list out there for the stamps that are going to be on sale with 15% off on Thursday. So I'm going <laughs> to, Jean, you should send me that list <laughs> or I'll go hunting for it too after we're done with the class. But what I'll do you guys is I'll put that on the newsletter section of my website and I'll also include a link to it on my um, email that I send out to you guys. So, okay. So at this moment, um, we have 20 signed up for the benefit and we're hoping for 36 and that's what we've consistently done for the last few benefits that we've done. So I'd have to say there's at least 16 more spots open if anybody wants to donate for a good cause. Um, so, all right, uh, what else? So I'm gonna flip the camera down you guys and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be making here soon. <laughs> right, Sandy? I agree. <laughs> yes. So um, I'll show you the cards we're going to be making. I have some happy mail to share with you. And also, oh, thanks, Deb. I appreciate you looking for the list. Um, I also have some, I'll show you the, what's coming up for classes, you guys. I'll try to run through them relatively quick. I know because we're taking into our class time. But I just want you guys to see what's coming up in case anybody else needs to sign up for anything that you haven't yet. Hi, Feline. Just saying hello on lunch hour. Woohoo! Thanks for sharing. I appreciate it. Feline, I have a little pile for you on the end of my table here. I know I have your ink, paper, scissors. I have your door. Yeah. So you guys, when you do six, not to share uh, Feline's surprise, but when you do six consecutive ink, paper, scissors in a row with me, uh, you get a little gift for me. And so Feline, I'll have your little ink, paper, scissors gift because you've done six ink, paper, scissors with me. And then I also have your swap cards from the customer swap Feline. So uh, we got to touch base and figure out. <laughs> you guys, I just got back from Maryland and um, I think that was our ultimate destination. But <laughs> I'm going to paint a picture for you guys to share with you what we did. Um, we basically we left Tuesday night a week ago and we drove to Shipshawana, Indiana. And um, you're going to think, well, weren't you just there? And I'll say, yep, I was just there with my mom. And I bought Tyler a shirt uh, as a gift. 
and the sleeves on the shirt went up to here on him. <laughs> Hi, Diane Bogenhagen. So needless to say, this beautiful shirt that I got him, it was like a plaid blue. He likes um, plaid because he's all into the plaid. Um, and it was a pretty blue color. Well, they had a 30 day return policy. So he's like, well, let's go back. And it was basically on the way. So you guys, we hit up Ship Shawana on Wednesday morning. Uh, so yep, got back to Ship Shawana twice in one year. And that was good. And then <laughs> got, I got him a different shirt, but not in Ship Shawana. I actually got him a, a shirt at a future location that we stopped at. And then from there, we drove to Erie, Pennsylvania. Four years ago, we stopped in Erie on the way home from New York trip. And uh, we fell in love with this little brewery uh, right off the highway. And we vowed to get back there. And so we made it a point to go, <laughs> to, go to Erie, Pennsylvania. Hi, Deanne. Hi, Mary Lemke. And we enjoyed, we camped there actually. Uh, so we camped in New York, but the brewery's in, in Pennsylvania. So the campsite was literally about 100 feet from the, the Pennsylvania, New York border. And so we camped in New York, but then we went to the brewery and Tyler was so busy beforehand for the last two weeks. You know, I don't get it, but um, he worked 70 hour weeks, the two weeks prior to be able to take vacation. And I don't, I, I get it, but I don't get it. So he didn't have time <laughs> to do a haircut before he left. So got on the phone three hours from Erie where he found a barber and he's like, can you be here at 545? So we got Tyler a haircut <laughs> on Wednesday night. So he was going into the trip with his ears lowered and his hair looking good. Um, and so that was our, our Wednesday it was Shipshawana and Erie, a haircut camping. Uh, and the, basically the campsite was right on Lake Erie. So we walked down to the, um, the lake and we had coffee on the stones that, you know, the little beach area. So that was cool. And then he had never been to Niagara Falls. And so from, <laughs> you guys, this is way out of the way. I get it. But we went from Erie, Pennsylvania up to, thanks for sending that link, uh, Deb, I appreciate it. We sent, um, we, we drove up to Niagara Falls. And he had never done the Maid of the Mist or the Caves of the Wind, Wind of the Caves, something like that, where you actually go out to the hurricane deck and you have the waterfall and we learned so much about the history of it. And so that was super cool. So on Thursday, we did that. We tried to meet up with Linda Hodge on Thursday and it just didn't work out with timing. Um, but otherwise, that would have been so cool to meet her in person. Um, from, from there, then we drove down to Pennsylvania. <laughs> so up north to down to Penn's Cave. Um, hi, Louise Power. Hi, Pat Detlefson. And from, from Penn's Cave, it which is in Pennsylvania, which was like discovered in the 1860s. Uh, it's a, an underground, you know, it's a, ca a cave system, but it's filled with water from a natural spring and they do boat tours through there. And Tyler has wanted to do that for a long time. So, yep, we went, <laughs> we went to the east, up north, and then down south. And then we finally made it to Maryland on uh, Friday. Um, but while we were at Penn's Cave, uh, we actually, there's a... a like an antique tractor show type thing with people selling lots of stuff. They had funnel cakes. It was like a fair set up for selling stuff. And so we got to cruise around that for like an hour walking around. And uh, uh, so that was Friday morning. And then Friday afternoon, we finally <laughs> got to Cunningham Falls State Park. So it took us three days to get there. Um, uh, and that's where our final destination was. So we camped in Cunningham Falls State Park then Friday night and Saturday night. Um, met up with friends that we made from last year, which were super cool. And then what we did on Saturday is we drove back <laughs> up to Pennsylvania and we went to Gettysburg and we did the whole uh, walking around Cups Hill. Um, we did the little bit in the downtown area and just the history there, you guys, is amazing. Wow, 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 wow. Um, you know, you learn about the Civil War in school, but to be able to be on the site where it happened, like where one of the battles was fought, right? The, four, the war went for four years. So uh, we're where the Civil War was actually fought and like like how the city it just was interesting we had a, a really great tour guide that gave us an hour and 20 minute tour uh, and walked us through the the area and it was awesome so that was cool and got back on Saturday night you guys and then I don't know about you <laughs> but it was raining it rained all all Saturday like from 10 o'clock 11 o'clock on uh till noon and then it rained our drive back and it was just raining on and off all of Sunday and Monday it seemed and then on the drive back on Sunday I mentioned we got to to meet up with Jean Terwilliger in Everett um, and Pennsylvania and got to meet her and her husband. Did you feel the spirits? No, Stacy, I did not feel the spirits. And that is funny because I bet that there are people that visit there and they feel the spirits. And I guess I was so 
so, I guess, not. I don't know if the, what the right word is, but fascinated or in awe of like, wow, oh, <laughs> what really happened here back in the 1860s? It was like from 61 to 65, four years, right? Uh, it's just, just crazy how many people lost their lives to fight over. Um, yeah, just crazy. So I did not feel them, but you know, I didn't, wasn't thinking about that because I was just more intent on listening and learning and, um, yeah, crazy. But I bet that there are people that feel that the spirit. So, um, so Sunday then Jean Terwilger and I got to meet up and then from there, Penny Powell, um, and I'm in town. Guess it's going to be after live put together. Yep. No problem, Penny. You can catch the replay. Absolutely. Um, so, but then Jean and her husband recommended going to Shawnee Lake State Park. So we walked the entire lake, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it took us about a good hour. Uh, what beautiful park. If you guys ever need uh, a great place to go visit, Shawnee Park in Pennsylvania. Uh, so Vera said all stamp sets, no bundles or hostess stamp sets. So um, that, that I guess if that's the case, then it's still select stamp sets. And if it's just no bundles or host stamp sets, there you go. Hi, Carmen Melendez. Okay, thanks for that info, Vera. Um, and then you guys, <laughs> we hauled it. Uh, I found the 15% list and emailed it. Thank you, Jean. I appreciate it. You guys, and then we drove back. Um, we got to basically to Dus Sandusky, Ohio last um, Sunday night. And we drove from basically that area. And <laughs> we got home at five o'clock last night and I had class at six. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a successful class. So you guys, that was the whole trip in a nutshell. It was really good. I think I'm done going for a while. The whole back-to-back -back of New Orleans, Ship Shawana, and then Maryland back-to-back, -back, all that was a lot. You guys, you probably think I wasn't home for the whole last two weeks, and that's exactly how it feels. But we're back on track, and, <laughs> and life is good. Um, I think I owe some people some emails yet. I'm still trying to catch up. I did a little bit last night, but I still have some to get back to. So um Oh, Becky, you go to Shawnee Park. Oh, it's definitely on. Hi, Debbie. Um, you can get the stamp set from the bundle and save 15. So the dies would have to be purchased separately. Got it. Okay, thanks for that update, Vera. Um, yeah, Becky, Tyler and I have it on our list to go back uh, to Shawnee Park and spend some time there. It is a beautiful park. So if anybody is looking for a great vacation spot or um, camping spot, that is the place to go. Hi, Carolee Crab. Yeah, you guys, it was a fantastic trip. Now it's like... Whew, you got to get back into the swing of things and get the dust like off, right? <laughs> so, all right, you guys. So I'm ready to flip the camera down. I appreciate you guys letting me tell you all about my trip. Uh, I have pictures, but they're all in Tyler's phone. I only took about three pictures, uh, maybe four total. So after I get them from Tyler, you guys, I'll post them on the page so you guys can live vicariously through some of the things that I did in case you haven't seen some of these places. That's, it's always nice to see the pictures, so... Very good. Hi, Mary Jo McCulloch. Hi, Kim Sketchfield. Okay, you guys, flipping the camera down. And uh, just to let you know, um, my demonstrator has a list and posted it. I believe it's select, but it's long. Um, Williamsburg is a wonderful place. That went to, uh, yep. Cindy, what a busy hand <laughs> you guys, Pat. Hi, Pat Thomas. Okay, Tyler checked the trip tick. I thought it was 2,300, but he confirmed that we did like 2,100 miles between Tuesday night and last night. So in about six days. <laughs> we did 2,000 miles. So it was a busy few days, Cindy. I definitely agree. I'm very lucky. Tyler does not mind driving at all. He gets tired. Um, usually in the last 10 minutes of where we got to go, he's like, I'm done. I can't do it. I can't do it. And then we pull over and then I finish the last 10 minutes. But thanks, Laura Sullivan. Sorry we missed you yesterday. <laughs> we tried. Um, but yeah, Tyler doesn't mind driving. He did probably, if I have to say, 90% of the driving. I probably drove a total of three hours out of all of the driving we did. So I like to, to ride. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. So this is what we're going to be doing here in a hot second. Um, these are the ringed with nature. Let's just stamp cards. That's what we're going to be making here soon. I'll do roll call in a moment, but I did want to share with you guys some happy mail that I got um, while I was gone. And um, a few days before I got, I left again, I had gotten some mail too. Um, this one comes from Penny Powell. Uh, down in my, she says, hello, sunshine. I'm down in Florida. She's the sunshine. <laughs> what a wind, whirlwind vacation. Yes, Diane, that's usually how we roll. Um, very pretty. This was a set from, a, I don't know if it was two holiday catalogs ago, but the little autumn, autumn goodness, or uh, there was an autumn set. I love it. So this looks like a nice little layout for a mystery card here, you guys, with some paper on the side, a nice little decoration on this white mat. My heart is grateful for you. And then look at the inside is decorated so pretty. So Penny, I got this. Thank you so much. I got your numbers for game night. Love it. 
This one comes from Carol Lee Crab. This was a paper pumpkin from June, um, from like last year, like not this June, and maybe not last June, but it, I'm not sure what, it had a box that was yellow, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Or it was the new ink colors from like when the new ink colors came out. Where it was just Jade, Misty Moonlight, and that uh, Purple Posy. So very cool. Using some paper pumpkins. Woohoo! I'm in the car picking up a granddaughter ball. I'm here and I'll be back home in 15. Perfect, Laura. Awesome. So that one's from Carolee Crab. This one comes from Debbie Schultz. Woohoo, Debbie. So um, she has here this. Oh, I love it. This is the stamp set from Painted Harvest, which was 2017. I loved those. Um, it looked like sunflowers. So pretty. Perfect time to pull that stamp set out if you guys have it. That painted harvest. So Debbie, I got that. And she's got a little um, acorn on the inside too. Very cool. <coughs> All right. This one comes from Faye Godby. And it is a design from Charlene Olson. And it's uh, I love the blues. It reminds me of Boho Indigo is what this card does. So this is, it's, be it's beautiful. It's a nice paper card. Um, this one comes from Miss Kathy. The King Parakeet Party with Starry Night. Um, very pretty. And uh, she decorated it up with some of the matching twine, the linen um, baker's twine. And then the contour, scalloped contours is the stamp set. And then the fern embossing folder on the back. Very, very cool, Kathy. I love it. This one comes from Laura Sullivan. This was a kit from a celebration from maybe not last year but the year before but then they made it into a kit that you can get and it was nice easy and it's like a little pocket card so cool happy mail cards i can use these then too i love it so it's the perfect thank you card so that's from laura this one she put a note in here um she made a note that it's vintage one of her first cards from five years ago very cool i have this stamp set laura it's very cool i love it it's like mixed bunch or something with flowers i can't remember but it had a matching punch um, each of them had a matching punch. Uh, very pretty soft colors. I believe it's pool party or cold. Yep, it's pool party. Yep, because we're going to be doing it tonight. And it's definitely pool party. Love it. So pool party with white. That was a die too from uh, many years ago. I can't remember what the name of that die set was, but it was so cool. And this one came from Beverly Smith. I don't like to share you guys' address, <laughs> so I'll flip that over. But a little cute cardigan with a little baby envelope. So... Um, it has this little pocket that you can put it. It's perfect for gift cards. And then Beverly sent me another one. Um, <laughs> you guys, I got to share with you what she wrote. I hope you don't mind Beverly. Uh, but she, you guys, so, um, dear mom, star baker, um, really love the cookies, um, from sunny Arizona. Um, so you guys, if you didn't get your packages yet, they should be coming soon. Um, the, the celebration celebration is this Friday. I think it's at 5.30, and everybody who is part of Celebration Celebration got their kits mailed out to you already, um, and they included cookies. Woohoo! My mom made molasses. Um, I will have to tell you, um, I'm not the biggest fan of molasses. I do like my mom's molasses cookies, um, but they're not my go-to cookie, <laughs> and she was looking for something different that would travel well in the summer that didn't have chocolate in it, and so we came up with molasses cookies, and I've been getting a lot of good feedback on these molasses cookies that they are really good. They're really doughy. Oh, Top Note. Yes, Laura Sullivan. Top Note. That's a dye that's called Top Note. Exactly. <clears throat> so the, the molasses are really doughy, gooey on the inside, kind of like doughy. And then cr like the sugar on the outside makes it kind of crunchy. And so I've been getting some positive feedback. And so when I told my mom that you guys were liking her cookies. She's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, mom, <laughs> they're good. Just because I don't like them. My dad doesn't like molasses cookies either. Mom, Tyler loves them. So um, so she got some positive feedback on those. So hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. We haven't started yet, so we're good. Um, so yeah, so for those that are attending um, celebration, celebration with me in person tomorrow night and on Sunday, you'll also get cookies. So, um, so I'm so excited that they turned out really good. And um, I'll show you guys the package, how we did it um, when we do class on, on Friday. Okay, so I'm going to take a little time here. Any cookie from Janet is pretty darn amazing. Yes, you're right, Diane. Oh, my mom makes everything good. So I'm going to flip down, you guys, and I'm going to share with you what we've got going on. Um, so just a note here. This is what we'll be doing for Celebration Celebration on Friday. So even if you didn't earn a spot at the event, um, you can still participate. I'm going to be doing this and making this via Facebook Live on Friday at 530 
on on when uh, what Thursday night, you guys, we're gonna be doing the monthly card class. So September, hi Linda Freund. Um, so we're gonna be doing these three cards on Thursday. I still have. What do I have? I have about eight. I had a little. Oh, here it is. Here's my post-it note. I have about eight left of the monthly class. I have about nine left for class today, you guys. And then we have. Um, just in case you're in person with me, this is one of the bingo cards we're going to be doing next month, just to share that. Game night with um, Lucky Hand or Game Night, we're going to be doing these cards, uh, which we're kidding up this afternoon. And this is uh, live on Monday night or in person Tuesday, next Tuesday morning at 10 or the 26th at 6 p.m. I have spots at all of them, you guys. I have about 10 set unaccounted for, for either in person or online for that. <clears throat> you guys, the Rustic Harvest looks like this, and I have about, what do I have, eight left, about eight left of this one. This is what we're kidding up on Thursday, you guys, and then this is class for next Thursday night. So they are the fall cards if you need some fall cards. Um, and then the ink, paper, scissors for this month, um, September is the Splendid Thoughts. I think I might have 15 or 20 left, and this one's a little pocket where the white pulls out this way, and then... There's this one, <clears throat> that one, and then a fun fold in this one that looks like this. That's the gourmet card, as my mom would say, the gourmet one. So that one I have about 15. Again, this one's not till later, though. This is September 29th, so we've got a little time on that one, but we are kidding them up this week. If you guys missed it, last week I shared fun folds with you. Um, I... I know that you guys are gonna love these fun folds. Uh, Chris and I made these last week. I haven't published any details yet. It's on my schedule, but I haven't put it on Facebook yet and I haven't put the details. And so that's one of the cards. Uh, this is another one. So we've got a Christmas card. We've got a Halloween card and that flips like that. So cool. Um, and then we've got a winter card with a shadow box that opens like this. Okay, so winter, and then we've got a fall card, and it's like, goes like that. So that's fun folds, you guys, for early October. I'm going to cap it. I'm going to do 100 kits. Just to say I've done 100 kits. <laughs> the last fun folds class I did, you guys, we did 96. And so everybody's like, well, why don't you do 100? Why don't you do 100? I'm like, I'll do 100 one time. Just to say I've done 100, but it's a lot. It's like, the more and more, it's a lot of work, you guys. So once this fills up at 100, I bet you any money, it'll, it'll fill up at 100 because I already have about 15, 20 people signed up and I haven't even published the class yet. So just so you know, like if you want the fun folds, please sign up early, okay? And then I'm doing another class that is not even on the books. Hi, Kate Weir. Hi, Susie Socks. Um, it's ad hoc. Chris and I had fun working with the soft seedlings. So we're rolling over this fun fold, this awesome fun fold, and it's going to be a double whammy, um, and it's going to be offered in this class where um, it's soft seedlings, you guys, and this is going to be my first YouTube live class, um, and that's going to be the transition from Facebook lives, and then I'm going to be doing YouTube lives, I, I think at the same time as Facebook, I'm not quite sure, haven't figured it out, but I'm going to be transitioning from lives from Facebook to YouTube, and so you guys... Details will be following on this in the future. Um, Marcia Colbert, hello. Okay, so that's a little bit, you guys, of what's coming up in the not-so-distant future. Uh, just in case you are interested in any of that stuff, please reach out. Um, we're going to do roll call really quick. Uh, we have here for Let's Just Stamp. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, this officially, I call this the first class for September because I did have class on September 1st, but it was technically an August class. It was August ink, paper, scissors. So here we are on the 13th, and it's like the first <laughs> the first Facebook Live class. Woohoo! Okay. Well, Mystery Card Night counts too, but it's not like a kitted up class. So, all right. We have first, uh, we have Miss Julie Bierschbach, and then we have Holly Gentry, uh, Karen Wetstein, Jean Maxwell, uh, Bar Barco, Jeannie Parker, Donna Gruski, uh, Shirley Malarkey, Sandy Wicklander, Vera Anderson, Doris Munson, uh, Mary Lemke, Debbie Schultz. Hi, Linda Hall. How are you today? Okay, so we had Debbie Schultz, which is Buzzy at work, um, Betty Pyle, um, Penny Powell, Cindy Runtree, Deanna Stahl, Beverly Smith, Angela Knutson, Becky Gandelfo, and 
Sue Somerville and Mary Carls. <laughs> um, Louise said, love the autumn cards using non-traditional colors. Yes, the mint with the brown is so pretty. So, all right, so you guys, we had 23 people signed up. I think I have spots for nine more. And we had nine people place orders to get this class for free uh, with a minimum order. And so I'll do a drawing for the door prize for those nine people later. Yay. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're doing the Let's Just Stamp class, you guys. This one started with uh, Diane Bogenhagen and I back in July of last year. So we're going on a good solid year of these classes. The first class that I ever did, uh, we uh, Facebook Live. Yay, Laurel's catching me live, woohoo. So uh, I shared that video link in the description of this class. So in case you're looking for more information on if you're just starting, so we try to gear this class towards beginners or uh, people who uh, haven't been stamping for a while that are looking for more um, information and easier cards to put together. We still make them very special in layers, guys. Uh, we just, we keep out the machine, like the stamp and cut and emboss machine. We don't do embossing and we don't do die cutting. Um, sometimes there are dies that are available with the stamp set, but we don't generally use them because we're trying to make this class appeal to somebody who doesn't have a lot of stamping supplies. We try to keep the ink pads at a minimum or keep it to just one stamp set um, and also um, just keep it so that it's, it's easier for somebody. Now, go back to that video that I shared the link from, it's called the Blossoms and Bloom class from last year, and you can watch it. The first hour of that class really goes into detail on what you need if you're a beginner stamper. What kind of inks? What are the inks? What are adhesives? What are cutting tools? Like, what are the extra things that you can use to make cards? And so I, I don't feel like I need to reinvent that video every single time because I can refer, that's the magic of videos, I can refer somebody back to that video. And so I'm excited to just start making on the, working on these cards I mentioned first off, you guys, I won't be doing a tip Tuesday today because class is on Tuesday. So I feel like you can watch and get some tips as I, as I do class. Uh, so yay, yay, yay. Okay. So let's think here. Um, which card do we want to do first? Um, and you guys, Kelly has been very suave about doing Technique Thursday and featuring cards that are coming up in classes and giving you a little sneaky peeky of a technique that we're doing. And so Kelly already did a uh, um, hi, Charlene. Kelly already did um, a Technique Thursday on how to score one of these cards, which is super cool. Um, she already talked about the splitting of the one card too, which is awesome. And so so sometimes you can catch those Technique Thursdays and get a little um, insider information before we actually have the class. So which one do we want to start with? We're going to start with um, we'll start with the Christmas card. So um, we did a Christmas card or two in August. We did one or two in July, and now we've got another Christmas card. But you guys, if you're looking for Christmas cards, just know they're going to go full bore, full speed ahead with me and Christmas cards um, starting next month. So in early October, almost every card class that I have is going to be Christmassy or holiday related. I'm still in fall right now. So we're going to get one Christmas card with this set of cards, which is awesome to help you get a little bit ahead of the game. So, all right, we're going to flip the camera down and we're going to get started, you guys. Um, know if you're watching me live for the first time, all my information is here. Um, my email address is here. My website is here. My phone number is here. My host code is here, but you can always find my current host code on my website. Um, and I like to remind people that if you are new to me and you're placing an order, um, the easiest way to make sure that my host code is included, <clears throat> excuse me, is included in your order. Like let's say you want to get a class for free. If you click on the events link on my tab and you go to this picture that I need to update because I, <laughs> I've been told I need to update it, but I, uh, there are other things that take priority, but that picture of me at a Stampin' Up! event, if you just click on that word here, right here, if you just click on that word here, it actually takes that whole link and takes you right into the online store and it makes it so that the host code is automatically applied. You never have to type it in and it's just on the order to begin with. So if you're new to me and want it, so then when you go to your cart to check out, um, well, I don't wanna sign in. Let's go to the cart and here it is. Well, it didn't. That something got lost, hang on. That's not how that was supposed to go. <laughs> Hang on. We're going to try that one more time. So click on that link here. It takes you into the online store and it should have automatically put the host code on and it's there, right there. The host code is linked. 
So then you don't have to type anything. And at that time you could log into your account. And so if you're newer to me, hi Dar McCarthy, and you're uncertain about what the where the host code is, it's always on my website. And that's where you can get that without having to reach out to me and asking me what it is because I don't keep them open for a month like other demonstrators. I when when I hit, hit a certain amount, I, I close them out. So the stamp sets that we're going to be using today are called Ringed with Nature, which is in the new mini catalog. Um, it does have matching dies. Now, you don't necessarily need the dies for the cards we're going to be making, um, but you can. And I'll show you which dies we'll be using. And then in the moment is the other stamp set that we pulled in. Now, the only thing that we pulled in from this stamp set were the birds. <laughs> and I literally cut them off of her to the top of her head here. I like these birds, but I don't always want to use her as the stamp with it. So I cut the birds off. I, I literally did. I put the sticker on and then I cut the birds off and I've used these birds singly by themselves more often than anything in this stamp set. So know that if you're newer to stamping, um, hi, Mitzi Stanley, Mitzi, I need you <laughs> to reach out to me because I emailed you a couple times about the ink, paper, scissors from June. Um, I've been trying to call you, but I don't think I have your phone number, but um, I need to settle up with you on that class. <laughs> so um, if you could reach out to me via email or um, pop a check in the mail, that would be awesome. Sorry to ask you through this, but um, I've been trying to reach you and I haven't seen you online for a while. So there you go. Glad you are watching. All right. Right, so you guys, I'm going to show you where in the catalog you can find this stuff. So in the holiday catalog, we have here Ringed with Nature. And one of the things you can do is in the back, there's an index. So in case this stamp set appeals to you and you don't have it yet, it's called Ringed with Nature and it's on page 62 uh, right here. And so that's where you can find the stamp set and the dies. Um, it comes with a hybrid embossing folder as well, which is super cool. We're going to be using this bundle a lot on the class on Thursday night with this card right here. So, so you guys will see more about that on Thursday night. Uh, so that's where it's from. And what we tried to do with this one, you guys, is this celebration paper, we did disclose that it was free last month, you know, through August 31st. And it is, um, it's, not available for free anymore, but we thought that it paired so nicely with the stamp set that we couldn't but help use it for these cards. So these are the different designer papers that we pulled in. Um, and so um, just know um, I do have, and that's what we're actually going to be using for the frame on Friday night too. So um, anybody who participated in the celebration celebration got a quarter pack of that from me as a gift. So um, so perfect. So we're going to start with the Christmas one here. So and when you look at the stamp set, there's a lot of different things going on. There's a house here and it's, um, it could go with like a welcome to the home. There's a stump, which is like the fall kind. There's a, a flower, which is the poinsettia. There's mushrooms. There's a bunch of different sentiments. So that's what's cool about this. When we, Diane and I pick these sets for Let's Just Stamp, we try to go with things that have focal images and things that have sentiments. Um, if it has dyes or not, that's regard, you know, like not a deciding factor for us. So, but we did like that it has, so we have three different themes of cards going on. And so with this, um, for you guys that did the class, <laughs> I got a little bit like I was talking to Chris about the scoring for you guys, right? So I'm curious what your thoughts are. So while I talk about the scoring part, I'm curious what your thoughts are on in terms of scoring for you versus not scoring for you. So Chris's idea was to let you guys, when you get kits from me, score yourselves and learn how to do the scoring on a card like this. Um, and I did all the scoring for you guys ahead of time. I hadn't done it by that time, but she thought that the only way that people learn how to do scoring is by actually doing it, right? And practicing. And so I'm curious, do you guys like that I do it for you? Or do you feel like you would benefit greater from taking a class with me if, I'm trying not to drop my cutters here, if you did the scoring yourself? So there you go. That's my poll for you guys. <laughs> Do you want me to, to not do the scoring or to do the scoring when it's for special things like this? Um, I know for the celebration celebration, you guys, I did not score the frame for you. I'm going to teach you how to do that on Friday night. But for this one, I'm curious. Like, this is a perfect example of where um, I did the scoring for you, but maybe you would have liked to have done the scoring yourself. So um, this is, let me flip back down. So this was what we're talking about. There's an extra little bit of scoring on here to give it um, a little bit of definition on the side. So if I get the lighting just right, you can see that there's some score lines going that way. And then there's one going this way. 
there's two going on the side here, and then there's one more up here. So what we did is we created a frame with that. So uh, it will save you a lot. Oh, Cindy said score herself. It will save me time. Yes, it would. I, I you know, I, I definitely agree. So what I did for this for you guys, um, for those that got the kits for me, is I did score right in the middle. So that I generally do because it's easy for my mom to fold these and for me to fold them and have to put them in your envelopes, but it comes for the extra scoring. Um, so in this case, there's an extra score line and it's basically a quarter inch all the way around. So each side has a quarter inch from the, in, you know, from the edge. And then the, the short edge here has it at three eighths and three eighths from each side. So what I mean by that is a quarter inch. So when you cut the paper, you cut it at eight and a half by five and a half, and then you score it at four and a quarter, which is the center. And so now you would score it at four, which is a quarter inch. Um, you could score it on this side at a quarter inch. And then now you flip it this way and five and a half minus a quarter is five and a quarter. So you're gonna score a quarter there and three eighths inch. So there's that. And then over here, you would do it at a quarter. So you guys, I love the scoreboard. All my scoring I do, I do do it on the scoreboard. And especially if you're gonna do multiples of this card, it's so nice to have a scoreboard like that to just have it that you don't have to guess. You can definitely use this personal trimmer. This lighter one here is for scoring, but you always have to line up your paper in here just right. So it's a lot more finagling back and forth to get it exact. And like, you gotta get it just right. Where on here, when you use the scoreboard, you could see I just looked for where the numbers were and just scored them. And so that's what we are doing here is just creating that extra bit of scoring to give it a little frame. So super cool. So Cindy, you're the only one so far that said you can score yourself. <laughs> it will save me time. Um, so um, the scoreboard makes it so easy. Yes, I definitely agree, Deb. But, you know, so I'm just curious. Like, I don't want to keep anybody from not learning how to do something by always doing it for you. So, um, so what we'll do is on the score line here, you guys, we're just going to fold this. Now, if you got this class from me, you've already got it folded in half. I didn't burnish the edges. Anna said, I would prefer the extra scoring to be an option. Christine, I believe I'm signed up for this class. Um, Kathy Jackson, I don't have you signed up for this class. You, I had you down for the October monthly class. So I'm pretty sure, not the October. So Kathy, I believe, I have you signed up for a class, but it wasn't this one, Kathy. Um, I have to look back in my notes. But I'm pretty sure, I'll have to look at it later after class. But Kathy, I'm pretty sure I did sign you up for a class, but I don't know if it was this Let's Just Stamp. I thought it was October's Let's Just Stamp. So if there was confusion, we can make it right. I still have card kits and we can switch it around, but we'll have to look back in the notes and see. So Betty says she can score as well. Um, yeah, so Kathy, we'll figure it out. And no worries if you are on wanting this one. I have kits available and we can get it switched around. Um, Anna, I would prefer the extra scoring to be an option. I'm not sure... Um, if that means to score it or not to score it or that you would score it as an option. So, okay. All right. So in your kit, you guys, that's how your red came. And now this is Poppy Parade. I have a much still, so I can't check my envelopes. Oh, okay. No, I didn't call your name off, Kathy. So hi, Stacey Burns. I didn't call your name on this class. So I'm pretty sure that I don't have you signed up for it, but we can make it if that's what you want. So no worries. We can make it work. Um, okay. In your kit, you guys will have some of this gold. So this is in the mini catalog as well. It's the gold shimmer ribbon. So you've got some of that. You've got your piece of designer series paper, which is from that ringed with love. And that is a three by four. And your evening evergreen is the three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So that just mats on there like that. And then you have the double inside, you guys. So Diane and I, whenever we do Let's Just Stamp, we always do a double matting on the inside for you just to get you some extra color on the inside. And so that is what you have going on here is your evening evergreen traditional mat, four by five and a quarter, and then the white is five and a sixteenth by three and thirteen sixteenths. And then you'll have this piece right here, which is for your poinsettia. And then you'll also have a piece of white like this, which is it's um, three by three quarter inch. So, all right, so that's gonna be for our Merry Christmas. And so this one's a little tricky, you guys. There's some ooh, stamping that needs to happen. <laughs> Hi, Sandy Wicklander. You're gonna need the poinsettia here. 
like that. So that's the poinsettia that we're gonna use with Poppy Parade. And then there is a leaf in this set. So the leaf that you're gonna need is this little guy here. And we are going to be stamping the poinsettia and then we are gonna be putting our leaves in there. So what we're gonna do though, is we wanna do that on the inside and on this white piece here. Now these are photopolymer stamps and so we are going to want to use the piercing mat. I absolutely love the photopolymer stamps because you can see through them really nicely to see exactly where you're stamping. Red rubber is fine, but um, there's nothing better than just to see exactly where it is that you're stamping. And so what we're gonna do first is use Poppy Parade and we're gonna put the poinsettia on each of these white pieces. So the Stampin' Up Whisper, or <laughs> it used to be Whisper White, the Stampin' Up Basic white paper is very, very nice. It's got a nice texture to it. It works really good with their inks. So um, I know that there's lots of options out there for getting white paper, but I think when you try the Stampin' Up, uh, oh yeah, so Kathy, you, that is exactly it. You got the September monthly class and you're right on there. Yep. So those got mailed out to you. So, but Kathy, if you are interested in this or anybody, uh, as we're going through here, I do have a bunch of this one available. So, so when you go to ink up, you want to make sure you get plenty of ink in the, the foam pads here. They are foam, not fabric. And so they're very juicy and you do not need to squish hard on the Stampin' Up! ones. And we're letting the ink just sit on the paper and letting it marinate. And it gives you a nice crisp image. So you're going to do that twice. And then we're going to put that guy, let's see how we got him, down in the corner here. Okay, and I think that that's it for this Poppy Parade color. We will use it on another card in the near future, but that's Poppy Parade. The other color is the Evening Evergreen. So here's the thing, though. I just realized this. We need to make ourselves a little mat. So if you're not using this poinsettia exactly because you have a different one that you're using, um, no worries. Um, you can always find a different stamp. I'm trying to think here. We had, I think, Diane, we created a little mask. I think we probably threw it away. So what we're going to do. So if you look at, if you look at the stamp and you look at the leaf, we're going to do something called masking because if you stamp this, it's going to go and put a little bit of a, a stem on the flower. So this is called masking. So you're gonna need that one more time. And I grabbed something that has a sticky post-it note on it. So Stampin' Up! also has masking paper, which would work perfectly fine. But <laughs> my masking paper is up in my craft room, of course. Um, I should have grabbed it. This would be the perfect time to, to show you how to use it. Um, the white paper is worth it since the inexpensive white bleeds the stamped image after sitting for a while. Perfect. Thanks, Stacy, for that. I appreciate knowing that. Hi, Angela Knudsen. Um, definitely their white paper is amazing. So you guys, what you're going to want to do, now this is what we call masking. And so you're going to stamp whatever image you want to do masking with, and you're going to cut this out. Now, you get to see me fussy cut. Yep. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the white border. Thanks for sharing, Angela. I appreciate it. Yes, needed to do needing a mask. Yep, <laughs> Diane, I completely forgot about that until right now. I'm like, how did we do those leaves? Oh, yes. Hi, Nancy Billets. Okay, so you guys, you're going to create this mask. And I would recommend, you know, I'm using this post-it note. It's going to work for a period of time. But like when Diane does this for her in-person, she's going to give everybody... Um, their own masking paper so that they will use their own because the more that you keep stamping on it with a different color it's going to um, get full of ink and then it gets really inky dinky do is what I say so all right so what we're doing it's post-it note on the one edge and you're just cutting around so that you are going to put this piece down onto the white mat and then once you've stamped your leaves, then um, you can use the mask again on the other one. So you can use it multiple times. Um, just know as you get more ink on it, it gets, um, gets like sticky, like not sticky, but it blended, schmeary. Okay, so you've created this little mask. And what happens now is you just have to line that up and figure out where it goes. And I did cut off the white edge as much as I could because I don't want 
there to be like a white space. And so now that's, it's like a sticker on here. Okay, so you're gonna grab your green, hi Mary Ty. You're gonna grab your uh, Evening Evergreen ink. And what we're gonna do is just put this here just in case. And I went with five. So, oh, there's actually six. So this one did five. This one I did six. It's honestly up to you how many leaves you wanna put in. But now that I have that sticker on here, when I go to stamp my leaves, I don't have to be concerned about where that little um, edge of the leaf comes in. So I'm gonna do two up here, and I'm gonna do one over here, one more here. So I'm trying to make it look not un like uniform. <laughs> so I'm gonna put one here. I might as well do one more over here. Okay, and if you go to ink up and you stamp it down and the color doesn't all leave, what's nice about photopolymer is you can just go right over the top of it. Now, you see wherever all those little stems are, those would have been in your um, stamped image for the poinsettia. And what you do is you just take that and you peel that off and now you've got it like the leaves are tucked in from behind, which is super cool. That was that's the whole purpose of the masking. Now what we're gonna do is migrate over to this one and do the exact same thing. And I'm gonna try to follow my sample over here because I really like how those leaves turned out. So the double one is up there. So this, these two are the same. And so I'm gonna do one leaf on this side and I'm gonna do a leaf on this side. Oh, Carmen's stamping with me today. Awesome, I love it. Okay, so there's that one, that one, and then we're gonna do this guy over on this side. There's one in between here. And then I've got one more right here. Okay, so because you put that sticker down, now you can peel it off and you've got this awesome poinsettia. And now this, what I was talking about, if you continue to use this and use this and use this, eventually where that green is, it's gonna get so saturated, it's gonna start soaking through the paper. But you can save this and use that for multiple times. Because as long as you've made the mask, why not keep using it, right? So I always stamp off, for those that are new, I always stamp off a little bit uh, before I go to clean my stamp. So those are done and we'll clean them in a second. But what we have to do, <laughs> there is no dye for this, you guys. I'm so sorry. This is where you're gonna have to use your scissors and fussy cut. So fussy cut is a term that we use to refer to like you're fussy cutting. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to explain it, but you're cutting it out with your scissors. Uh, and I like to leave a little white border around the edge here so that it looks like it was cut out with a dye. Um, don't worry about the edge here. And so you're just gonna work yourself around here. Now, you may have a different uh, poinsettia stamp that you can use with a die. You may have something completely different because I know not everybody gets the stamps that we're featuring for the cards that we make with you guys in class. So you are just gonna take your scissors. Um, you know, there are different ways that you can cut. If you don't like to see that little bit of a white border on the edge, you can definitely cut it off. You guys, when it comes to your cards, you have to remember that they're your cards and you can make them exactly how you want them. They do not need to follow my sample card exactly how I do it. Um, the sky's the limit with making it your own, right? And mine's just a starting point for you guys to get your creative juices flowing. So we're going to keep going. And I'm not always consistent, you guys. Sometimes I get closer and sometimes I'm further away and I just, the end, nobody sees those little details except for you and me when we look at our own work, right? So just know that others do not critique them as much as we critique our own cards. But there you go. So I've cut out my, the poinsettia. Poinsettia, poinsettia, I call it both things. So, so there's that. Now this is where, if you want to save your mask, what I might recommend doing, because if you're going to use it again in the future, hi, Catherine Healy, you're just going to, I would stick that in the inside and then you'll have that for the future if you want to make more of these cards. All right, so now that we've got that stamping done, what we can do is get a little bit glue happy. So we can do those two. So you guys, as long as I've got my glue open, oh, we're not done stamping. We have to do a sentiment yet. But now that I got the glue in my hands, we're just gonna put a little bit of glue here and a little bit there. 
This will go on to our larger green mat. So this is Evening Evergreen. Hi, Barb Johnson. Thanks for joining. So that's our one mat. And then here's the other mat. Now, I don't know if there's really a top or bottom to this designer series paper, like a pattern um, up or down. Uh, so as you're looking at it, what I might recommend doing is... No, Thank you. Yes, Catherine, it was a great time. We had so much fun. Um, we got rained out a little bit, but doesn't make it that the party's <laughs> not going to party, right? <laughs> Just deal with the rain and you keep going. So like when you're using this, like figure out which, oh, well, that flower up there is really cool, right? So now I'm going to make sure I put it on like this. So this can get popped up with some dimensionals. We were lucky. Um, we bought a new tent last year and I was amazed. It rained for, <laughs> we were in the tent for like nine hours, like, for, you know, from, by the time we went to bed, I just didn't want to get up in the morning because, you know, you're snuggly buggly in a sleeping bag <laughs> and it's cold out there and it's raining out there. And it was so amazing that there was no water inside the tent at all, like at all, which was awesome. It wasn't even damp inside the tent. So we got, we're very happy with the tent that we got. So that's there. And then this is going to go on the inside and might as well get that put in. So because we didn't have a lot of layers on the outside here, that's why it's awesome when you have a, the double mat on the inside. It just gives you a little bit more structure and stability. So that's what we have so far. We gotta stamp the Merry Christmas. So that Merry Christmas does come from this set as well. And what you're gonna wanna do, grab that piercing mat, grab the Merry Christmas, and then you've got this little three quarter by three strip of white. And hi, Mary Jean. That's going to go, I'm going to stamp it closer to the right-hand side. I did notice that on my piece here, it's not exactly the straightest piece. So I'm going to just make it straight. Sometimes, you guys, that happens when you're cutting paper. It doesn't always get the straightest. And so you can see, I could, I could see that it wasn't. So if you ever see that on a kit from me, all you got to do is grab out your you know, trimmers and <laughs> trim it off. I am human. I don't always get things as straight as I'd like for them to be. I try my best for you guys. I honestly do. But sometimes something gets missed. And so don't be afraid to grab your scissors out and trim it to where it needs to be. So I'm going to stamp this closer to the right hand side because a little bit of the flower is going to overlap on the, the left. So there's our Merry Christmas. <clears throat> And then let's go ahead and get that cleaned off. All right, so now we've got a little bit of assembly. So how should we assemble this? So when it comes to little banners or like strips of paper like this, I like to pop up the side that's out on the edge and I like the, to glue it flat on the, the other side. So I'm gonna put a dimensional. So when it comes to adhesive, you guys, you can mix and match your adhesives. You don't always have to use, you know, straight across, all dimensionals are all flat. Like here's a mixture of a dimensional and then liquid glue. And what we're gonna do is put this down. It's gonna slightly hang over the edge of the green, just a little bit. Okay, now the flower. You're gonna wanna grab your tear and tape. And you've got, I don't know, I think it might be eight inches. I put eight inches of gold shimmer. Should be enough. Hi, Carrie Peterson. Uh, oh, as long as I'm doing this, you guys, just a reminder, I've got a bus going down to Indiana, <laughs> to the Stampin' Up! convention down in Indiana, um, at the Indiana Convention Center, um, Indianapolis, I should say. Uh, I have about six spots on my bus left in case there is a demonstrator that would like to get on the bus between Green Bay and Milwaukee and ride down with us. Um, I've got hotel spots available yet, and... Um, I can always email you any of the information if you'd like it. So just know I do have some spots available. Okay, so I went around in a circle till I figured out how I had it. And I have that tear and tape prepped on the back. And what I'm going to do is this ribbon is going to come out like the side here. And then what I do is loop it this way. So I've got just a tail and a loop. And then I'm going to bring it across. I'm going to make a little loop and a little tail. So eight inches should be enough, you guys. I mean, I, I'll end up cutting off a little. Um, so we're gonna make a little loop here and a loop like that. So I did have somebody just join us. So I've had two new people that are riding on the bus since last week, which is awesome. And so I've got just a little space left. Um, 
if anybody else would like to make it easy to get down to um, to Indianapolis. <laughs> I know there's lots of different ones across the United States, but the one that I picked was Indianapolis. So, all right. So, hi, Kathy Ballard. All right. So, there we've got the tape on the back. And what I'm going to do is pick that off. And I'm going to put some dimensionals back here. Because I want to pop up my flower. So, we're going to put a few of those on. And I'm going to hit some of the ribbon and make sure I got that nice and secure. And then we're going to pick those off. And then this will go on that left-hand side. So you guys, a simple, easy card. This one, if you're looking for some easy Christmas cards, <laughs> besides fussy cutting the poinsettia, right? And doing the poinsettia, like it just goes together really easy. And so what I've got then is I've got this kind of, you know, look, figure out how it will, looks best on here. So I'm gonna go actually like that, okay? I kind of fit the Mary right in between um, the flower here like that. All right, so that's sticking down. Now you wanna grab your scissors to trim your ribbon. Cut your tails at an angle. Like that. And then in your kit, you guys should have three gold pearls. And what we did with the gold pearls is put them on the center of the poinsettia. So the gold pearls come from, you guys have a lot of them because we did um, this card right here that we're doing on on Thursday night uses all like the bluish ones. And then I had another class that uses all the red ones. <laughs> so I had the same, the gold ones for this class. And so I'm gonna, you guys have three of them in your card kit. So the three of them go right in the center of the poinsettia like that. It's so cool. It just, it really makes the poinsettia pop when it has that gold. Now, if you want more embellishments, we only, I only put three in your kit. If you want more and you have other gold embellishments, I thought it would look cool to add a few more like scattered around on here, but we kept it at the three. Now we don't forget your Stella. Now, if you go to Stella, your poinsettia, it's gonna bleed and so are the leaves. So what you might consider doing is using your Stella pen and just, you could Stella your poinsettias on the designer paper because that won't bleed at all. And that would give you a little bit extra of bedazzly on your card by doing that. So just like that. You can definitely try to Stella your flower here, but just know if you do it, um, you're gonna want to not drag the color over any of the white area and just stay within the red. So what I'm doing is doing the red. As soon as you go over that white area, it's gonna make it look pink. And that's something you don't really want with this card, I think. So just added a little bit of Stella there. All right, make sure you wipe out your Stella then when you're done, because otherwise there's a little red on there. And we've got our first one done. So there's what we have. Merry Christmas. Now, if you guys have a little sentiment that you want to stamp on the inside, you should. I think what I'm going to do is whoever wins this card can stamp a little sentiment on the inside, or it's perfectly fine to write a love note on the inside. <laughs> a long love note. All right, there we go. We got one done. It's very, e like, just cool. doesn't... Besides a little bit of designer paper, and what's nice about this designer paper, you guys, is a three by four, and it's a 12 by 12 sheet, so you get 12 mats out of the one sheet. So it's a really nice uh, number, like uh, size for, for matting. Okay, so we're gonna do this one next then. So one done, woohoo. Oh, just so I don't forget too, you guys, I have these cards from Abigail Rose that we made a few weeks ago. I have the, um, I got winners. <laughs> Yay, we can announce them later. All right, so there's one card done. All right, we are going to do this one next. So go into your kit that has the pool party base. Um, thanks, Cindy. I'm glad you love it. Oh, oh, I'm spinning. So I wonder why I'm spinning. Oh, there it went. Okay. <laughs> I was like, when I see that wheel spinning, I'm like, whoa, that's not a good sign. All right. So grab your card kit if you're doing your this one with me. And there's a little bit different with this one. I gave you guys the option of one, if you wanted some die cut pieces extra in here. And it was like a lot of people reached out and said, yes. And so just so you know, this card you're going to have in your kit, you're going to have a scrap of the crumb cake for your stump. And you're gonna have a scrap of crumb, um, soft suede and poppy for these mushrooms. Now, in the card kit though, you're also gonna have some die cut pieces because people said, well, what if we don't have the stamps, then we, what can we use? 
Um, so just know that for you guys that got the card kit for me, um, thank you, Karen Westein. Karen volunteered to cut some stumps. So she cut some stumps here in soft suede and she cut some of these mushroom tops in pool party. And I think, um, poppy parade. I think that's what she did. So, um, you guys can confirm, but I know you've got my two. So because these stumps and the dye are, yeah, these mushroom stumps come two to a pair here. We only did two versus if you use the stamps, you'll get three mushrooms. Okay. So I'll show you that when I go run over and grab a kit real quick to show you, but you have your pool party base here. You also have one of your textural elements. So that's in there. And then you have some of the silver laced twine that's in your kit. You have two poppy parades that are four by five and a quarter and two whites that are five and a 16th by three and 13 16th, I think. So these are like the same. And then you have this piece here. And, um, so I didn't always match up for your kits. I didn't always match up the, 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 um, like when it's split like this, some of you, it, I, I made sure they look decent because sometimes when you're cutting the mat, you got enough to do an extra third one, but you didn't get an extra to do this one. So I tried to match them up nicely. Um, but that starts off with <clears throat> that piece of paper. Let me just tell you for those that don't have this, the width is, what is it? DSP. Hmm. Hang on. I'm trying to read my chicken scratch. Oh, it's three and five A's. So it's three and five eighths wide because that's your mat for here. And then what happens is um, it's four and a quarter. So that's how wide it is. And this is the one Kelly did a Technique Thursday. But what we do is we cut it off and then we split it. And so I'm just gonna grab my ruler and double check because that is one and a quarter and that should be three, perfect. Okay, so it's cut at three inches basically. So I've done this for you guys. So you already have your you already have two pieces like that so that you're ready to go. So that's the designer paper. And what else do I want to talk about? Let's, let's do the stamping so that we can get that part of it done. So Kelly did an awesome, when she talked about this, she said what you want to do is flip over these pieces so that you don't get any ink on them. Because if you get it, you know, if you have it the other way and you get ink on your block and you kind of rock your edge or something, then you might get ink on the designer paper and that's something that you don't want. But what we want you to do is put this here as a guide. Um, Donna Simmer, I can't see your, like, Donna just wrote, can you see my comment? I can't see anyone's comments. So um, Donna, I'm not sure why you're not seeing them. Maybe go out and come back in. I saw your comment come up here on my tablet, but I don't see it on my phone here, but I do see it on my I see your comment. <laughs> so I'm not sure, like, hi, Deborah, but I'm not sure why you're not seeing it, but maybe going back out and coming back in might help. All right. So on this one, you guys, there's two sentiments in this that would work. The get well soon and the happy anniversary. You want a long, skinny sentiment, not too long either, right? Because you're going to be putting your stump over here. So I picked out get well soon, which is on this block here. And so what I'm gonna do is ink that up. I can't see comments either. I've been in and out several times and I've lost my top fan. Boo hoo, oh my goodness, Cindy, boo hoo to that. Yes, and so it's funny as Deb Norman got her top fan back. <laughs> Have no idea what's going on. So I'm gonna like, I'm gonna line my designer paper up here as a guide, right? And then I'm gonna stamp my sentiment to the right hand side. And you do wanna make sure that it's on there straight because when I put that on here, it did not look straight at all. So you want to just eyeball your sentiment to make sure it's not crooked or curved. <laughs> there we go. So got that. I'm going to ink this back up and I'm going to hold these pieces like this. And then I'm going to stamp this to the right and try to center it top to bottom. Okay. Give it a second for that ink. Now, the reason we did not glue these down is because if you didn't, oh, perfect, Deborah. thanks for putting them in the mail today. Oh, Mail Friday, perfect. Um, if you don't like the way you stamp it, you could always flip it over and redo it, right? So that's why we didn't have you glue these pieces down. Okay, so that's stamping for the outside here. Um, yeah, Susie, these dies are one of my favorite set of dies. So then what we're gonna do is go over here. Now, if you have the stamp set, um, the mushrooms, you've got a little scrap of Poppy Parade 
and you're gonna stamp them. Let's see if that fit. Nope, oh, nope, doesn't fit that way. So we're going to, <laughs> I gave myself a small little piece here, you guys. So that works though. So we've got the three little mushrooms. Now again, if you don't have these stamps and you want to use the little die cut pieces that Karen did for you, you can definitely do that instead. And I'll show you what I mean in a, in a second here. So here's the stumps. So there's three little stumps like that. Okay, hi, Judy Bobo. All right, and then what we need is uh, the stump. <laughs> and I had class last night and I left the stump on the table. So one second while I go grab it. So if you're new and you don't know quite what comes in kits for me, I just went and grabbed one of these classes. Um, there, this is the three cards you get and they come in envelopes. And so what I'm talking about with this, listening to the birds and drinking a green iced tea. I love it. So when you get your kits, so we included the little stumps here. So there's one little stump and two little stumps and those come from that die. And then also you've got a pool party mushroom and a poppy parade mushroom. And then you also got your scraps of those two colors and your stump scrap. So this is, you'd put these two mushrooms on in place of it. So that's what would come in the kit. So if you don't have these exact stamps, you'd still have to figure out something to do with the stump, but I had an idea. The stump isn't so hard. If you want to just um, take your scissors and if you don't have this stamp, what you could do is make your own stump by just cutting a, a circle that's kind of oblong and just use that. And you wouldn't even have to put the lines on it or anything. <clears throat> and you still get a stump then. Okay, so I've got my soft suede ink again and we're gonna stamp it. Now, if you do have these dies and you'd like to use them, there is a die that you can use. I believe one of these um, actually fits the die so you wouldn't have to fussy cut it. But the whole purpose of this class, you guys, is to not necessarily have to have the die cutting machine. So there's that, and let's see what our inside looks like here. I bet I have it right over here. Oh, of course, mushrooms and then a sentiment. So let's do that stamping as long as we're here. So we've got this done, this done, these done. Hopefully that doesn't mess up anything. <laughs> Hi, Emily Mott. Yeah, so Deb Norman, you were just trying to call me <laughs> via uh, messenger. So that's what that buzzing you guys was. Uh, so, all right, so we're gonna do our little mushrooms on the bottom here as well. So um, what I'm gonna do probably is stamp the mushrooms first at the top here, something like that. I don't wanna do them too high because I wanna make sure my stumps fit. So we're gonna put them right about here. And then what we're gonna do is put the, the, those are the mushroom tops I mean, and then we're gonna put the stumps like this. So there, I think they're adorable. <laughs> they look like the little candies, the little gummy candies you get at Christmas time. So instead of stamping a sentiment in here, um, well, you know what, we're gonna do it. Um, it's thinking of you, and it comes from this set as well. It's that thinking of you right there. The thinking of you is perfect because it's a get well card. The love and warmth would work too. So there's that. So yeah, these mushrooms are so adorable. I love them. So thinking of you, it's going to go here at the top, near the top. All right. So I think that might be all of our stamping then. So we do have a little bit of cutting to do and we'll do that in a second. And let's do a little gluing though. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we can glue. So this gets glued and this gets glued and let's grab that and do those first so these whites um, they look like gumdrops yes louise that's what i was thinking little gumdrops that uh, they come in all different flavors like there's colors like purple and pink yes gumdrops that's exactly like spiced gumdrops so that goes on there 
and then this one will go on the other. So these two poppy parades were the same size and the whites were the same size. All right, and then they both get glued down. <laughs> you hit the wrong button, Deb. No problem. I'm like, why is Deb calling? I hope it's not an emergency. I mean, I did have Stacy Burns message me and was trying to tell me that I had food in my teeth. And ever since then, I've been trying to make sure I don't have food in my teeth before I go live. <laughs> Lesson learned. But, oh, it's so funny. So I was hoping there wasn't anything crazy going on. So that's our outside. And then this is going to be our inside. So Poppy Parade and Pool Party are great color combinations, you guys. So there's that. And then when it comes to this one, I definitely want to pop that up so that it gets towards the top. So we're going to grab our dimensionals again and we're going to put, I don't know, I'm going to go with six on the big one and then maybe four on this bottom one. And then you got to be careful whether you're putting this down here. Um, so this, you know, kind of make sure that the, the stuff is facing the right way. And I'm trying to get the border on the left and the right the same as the bottom. So that'll go there. So then pick these guys off. Uh, the other thing you're gonna need for this card is um, a, a marker. It's a stamp and blend in dark poppy parade. So this guy's gonna go right about here. Okay, so so far we're doing good. So that, we, we call that the split D DSP or designer series paper or pattern paper. But we got this whole conglomeration to do yet. So what we're gonna do is, this is in your kit, um, which way is he going? So whichever way you like it to face. So it's got like a curve to it. It can either curve one way or the other way. And with your Poppy Parade the Dark, um, my marker tip has started to get a little bit worn. So I am going to use that marker. I have since got myself another one that I only use for when I'm not coloring these objects. Um, when you're coloring on like wood things or your embellishments using a blend, um, you got to be really careful not to demolish your marker tip. And if it starts to happen and there's still ink in it or color in it, you can just dedicate that marker to be using for coloring on these kind of objects. So I've just colored on here and I want it a little darker. So what I can do is just go back over the top and give it another swoosh of color and that'll make it a little bit darker. So that is a dark poppy parade stamp and blend. And so there's that. We've got our ribbon set here. And what we need to do now is work on these things right here. So the stumps, I did leave them as a set of three. So when I go to cut these, I don't know if there is a die for this. There is not a die for this because the die is for the other um, single stumps. So if you do use the stamp, just know you will have to fussy cut. There is no die for it. And I'm going down to the area, but not all the way, like the area about halfway down. And then this will connect at the bottom here. So I left all three of them as a set of three mushrooms. <clears throat> so that's there. Hi, Mary Hornicky. Now this guy, I'm not quite sure if you do have the die sets. I feel like there's one of these that it should work. I think it's this one right here. That one's the right size. If you're not certain, all you have to do is pull these out. I'm pretty sure that it's not that one. It's not that one. I honestly thought it was this one. And it might not be, actually. So you might have to fussy cut this one as well, because I don't think... So the this is the hybrid embossing folder. This is the die that actually goes into the embossing folder, if you want to do that feature with it. I don't think that any of these actually work on these on that stamp <laughs> you guys will have to help me out <laughs> do you know if that has that stamp actually has a die in here because it doesn't look like any of these dies actually work but we are going to continue with our fussy cutting adventure here and we're just going to cut around now if you don't have the stamp set what you could do is just cut your own piece of crumb you know the piece of crumb cake that's in your kit and just cut it like a log shape like this and don't worry about the lines and just have it go on this way and that would work too. All right, so there's the stump. And then you have your gumdrops or your mushroom tops. And now these guys, 
they would need to get cut out all individually. They also don't have, <laughs> crazy, they don't have dyes that go with them. So here's where you had the option. You could go with two mushrooms and use the die cuts that I gave you in your kits, or if you wanna stamp and have three mushrooms, you'll have to fussy cut them. Hi, Kay Warren. All right, so there's this, and how are you guys liking this Tuesday stamping? <laughs> if you had to pick between Tuesday and Monday at one, would you pick Tuesday or would you pick Monday? <laughs> That's the million dollar question for today because I'm working on my schedule for next year and I was like, whew, Mondays or Tuesdays for the live, for the let's just stamp. All right, so there we've got our pieces, what we've got going on. What I'm gonna do is take that tear and tape uh, and put that along the back again of my stump. And so I'm gonna run these two pieces of tear and tape back here and pick off the back like that. And then what I'm gonna do is take the edge of the ribbon. There's, I'm gonna put this like that. So the edge of the ribbon, I'm gonna have it come out that edge, the top right. And then I'm gonna loop this down like that and make a little baby loop. I'm gonna swing it right back next to it. Uh, Donna Simmer, <laughs> she retired, doesn't matter. Great, I love it. And then this one is gonna come back. And so you've got this Deb Norman, or Doris, doesn't matter, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> perfect. So what I did is I didn't overlap them in the back because otherwise it gets like a hump, a big hump. And so what you can do is before you figure it out, like before you put it down, it's like, oh, do I wanna change anything? Okay, well, that one looks good. This loop looks a little big to me. So what I'm gonna do is actually pull that a little shorter because I can always trim the end off. And so that looks nice to me. All right, and then what you can do is just take your tear and tape. Either day works for Cindy, perfect. Cool, I'm gonna put that over the top of this to make sure it doesn't come undone and then grab my dimensionals. I'm gonna put one or two or three kind of around each one. And hopefully that, now I will admit these dimensionals are not quite as high as the ribbon. This ribbon is pretty thick ribbon, you guys. And so when you put that down on here, the dimensionals aren't quite as high. And the other thing too is where this one is right here, it's in the hollow area here. So you might need to go, <laughs> Laura says either day, <laughs> perfect. So you might need to put, I'm just gonna kind of prep run right there because when that catches, It'll give it some extra boost. And you know what, there's, I'm gonna put one more right in that middle track. Cause that, this designer paper's already popped up. And so I don't want it to like kind of sink down in those areas. Kay's taking a break from cleaning, perfect. All right, then what you can do is trim this. And we like to take this ribbon and sometimes we can fray ribbon. So just take your pick tool and kind of work the ends and pull them apart like this. And it gives it that. Now, if some people don't like that frayed ratty look, then don't do this. It's not your cup of tea, you don't have to. But by taking and pulling apart the ends like that, it kind of gives it that frayed worn look. I am going to trim this just a hair. And then we're going to, I'll show you here, just take your pick tool and kind of just start pulling it apart like that. So there you go. We've got it frayed a little bit. Okay, loves the stamp set. Awesome. Hi, Gail. Watching from South Carolina. Okay, so now you wonder about this thing. So what I did for this guy is he's just kind of tucked in like that, but you need to put some sort of adhesive on the back. And so my choice on this one would be the mini glue dots. So I'm going to put a couple mini glue dots on the back edge of it right there. And then we're going to just tuck that. You might need one more closer to the bottom by the tail. Oh, Sandy says either day works for her too. Perfect. So then this guy can just tuck in there and that should be pretty secure for him. And now our mushrooms. So what I did, and glue dots again, you guys. So on the ends of each of these, so we're gonna put a little glue dot there, a little glue dot here, yeah, Luis, I agree. The pool party with the poppy parade is a great color combination. All right, Deb, we'll see you later. Have a great afternoon too. So I put this big one at the top and then I put one of these at the side here like that. 
And then I got the widow one. <laughs> the widow one. <laughs> we said that a lot this weekend. Widow one. It's a widow one. All right. Now, though, you will want to take a smaller piece of dimensional. And I can, a big one fits no problem on that top one. But you're going to definitely want to cut some smaller ones for these. And what I did is a dimensional on the mushroom tops. And then I glued the bottom flat. So let's get that little guy off of there and put a little bit of liquid glue at the base of the mushrooms. And if you have that you're going with the die cut pieces, same concept, you're gonna glue each of the mushroom pieces together and then you can just put dimensionals at the top and liquid glue at the bottom. All right, so the textural element here acted as the embellishment on this card. Um, if you have other embellishments at home, that you'd like to throw on just to kind of put some more on, you definitely could. I'm going to grab one more glue dot and I'm going to put it right underneath the one berry and then that will attach to, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> so definitely want to put that glue dot and then hit the ribbon. Um, I was trying to get some stability here and you know what I did? I accidentally broke it and it's okay. We're gonna put it right into here and no one will ever know the difference <laughs> except for you guys watching. All right, so be careful. What I ended up doing is I cracked it because I was pushing down on it right here, but I just did put, um, I just put a glue dot under this one and then it's sticking now. So you can't even really tell that it's broken and it won't fall off. So Stella though, let's see what Stella can get done on this card for us. So thanks, Cindy. Um, you know, you can Stella these little berries here. So just know though, if you Stella them, you'll want to drag out the color. And then as long as you're at it and you're doing some poppy color, you could do these guys. And make sure though you drag out that color because it'll pick up, you can see here, it picked up some of that pink color. So you want to be careful. And the other thing though, because you've got designer paper here, you can definitely, definitely Stella different things on here. Hi, Pauline. All right. There we go. So we've got our second card done. Let's clean up a little bit. Clean up on aisle nine here. All right, so we've got two cards done. We've got our Christmas one done and we've got our fallsy-ish card done. <laughs> All right, so two done and we've got one more to go. So let's get the last card out. And this was actually the last, this was the order that we designed these cards in. So the tree one was second or that stump one and then the third one here was our fun fold with the houses. So this one has a little baby inside and <laughs> you can definitely tell that I practice on the back. So the baby inside and this opens like this. Okay, so that's what we got going on. All right, so what do you have in your kit though? So let's grab your kit um, and see what's all in here. So definitely navy with mint is another great combination, you guys. So we're gonna need a Versamark pad for for this one and I just realized that we also need I didn't pull this guy out yet but we'll need this leafy thing in here so let me get a block for that all right so you gotta have that little leafy thing so another little technique that we're gonna use is stamping with the Versamark pad to create some texture so for this one, the house, there was a sheet, a 12 by 12 that had all these different houses on it. And everybody got different houses, right? So you're not necessarily gonna have this blue one. You might not have that brown one. Um, and let's see what this kit gets. This kit has a house. So this is what your kit will look like, you guys. When you open it up, you'll have a house. Um, embellishments there. So this person will get a green house, right? So this sheet of designer paper or pattern paper had all these different houses on it, right? And like then on the inside here, you have all your other bits and parts. And so the houses may look different. So not to confuse anybody. Hi, Deb. All right. So in your kit, you'll have a house. You might have multiple houses too. Some of you, if it was like that, you might have an extra little house. Do with it what you want. But you'll have to cut that out in a little bit. You'll have this little sun. This is a three quarter inch so saffron circle. It is, the punch is retired, but I still use circle punches, especially when it comes to using suns. Um, this piece is mint macaron. It's the grass here. Um, it's the size on it is uh, two and a half by one and a half. 
And so what you're gonna need to do with this piece though, you guys, is it's ripped actually. So I usually take my middle finger and I take and use my nail and I create this little hill. So as I'm ripping it, I'm going up and down slightly to create this little hill look, right? And then that ripped edge kind of, <laughs> I don't know, I call it the grass, right? So that's all you're doing with this little piece. And you're just cutting a little, or I should say ripping a little bit off. So that's ready. These two white pieces are the same size. Um, they are two and three quarters by two and a half. And one is gonna go on the top of your blue arm and then one goes on the inside of your blue arm. So the arm has a score line for you guys. So all you have to do is fold it in half and take your bone folder and burnish it. And again, we're gonna work on these white pieces in a moment, but those are the white pieces for on the arm. I call that flappy thing the arm. And your piece of designer paper will go on the flap on the front. You have a piece of mint for on your inside, which is a traditional mat. And then you have just an inch is cut off. This is a traditional mat, except for one inch is cut off on this side right here. So what happens is the designer series paper will fit there. Um, so people who love the birds, like this is a great bird card. Um, if you don't like the birds, you could always flip it over and do the blue side like this. And it looks more like a wintry background. So your call, what you wanna use. And so what do we have here? Um, I noticed that this is cut, let's see here what it was. It was seven and a half by five and a half. But I'm thinking that mine is a little bit, when I made my sample, I'm gonna just double check this because I feel like it's a little bit longer. So this is where great to double check things. Hi, Linda Hodge. Great to double check things before you get glue happy. So this should be at seven and a half. And I think, oh yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, I was thinking that it was a little too long, but it's not, it'll be okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is do a little stamping. So it's hard to see it, but on the outskirts or around the edges of this, there's some Versamark right here, like stamped with the leaf, just to create some texture. And that, if you don't have the ink color, that's why it's great to have a Versamark pad, not only for heat embossing, but for stamping around the edge so that you can create your own background. And so the Versamark pad is like a pigment pad. It's an ooey gooey pad is what I call it. And what you're gonna do is when you use it, it almost looks like you're stamping the same color as the cardstock, but you're really not. It's just a clear. And I'm gonna make my own little background and you'll turn the stamp every which way and don't always be so uh, uniform with it. So you're gonna just go up and down and across. And then we're gonna work our way around the edges. Now you are gonna have to come back around and go in further because there is, it's about two layers thick on that. So we're gonna do I'm just gonna work my way around the outside first. Oh, Barb likes this fold, awesome. Yep, it's a little bit of a fun fold. Gotta sneak those in everywhere we can. Hi, Lynn Beasley. And we're gonna do another one over here. And if you're uncertain how far in you should go, all you have to do is take this little guy and you can see that the sides are good, but what happens now is we need to fill in this top area. So we're gonna do one like that and one like that. And so now that's good. And if you guys can't see that, we'll just go like that. And then you can see, I'm gonna do another one over here. I'm gonna do one here. And we'll flip that stamp around and go this way. And now we've got that all decorated nicely. So that's it for the Versamark. It was just, so this Versamark, any color that you wanna use for stamping, you it's, it complements, and that's what it does, is it creates this awesome background. Um, so perfect, so that's for that. And let's zoom back out though, so that we can keep her going. So that's done, so we'll put that here, that's here, um, that's done. Now your house, you guys. Some of you I noticed, um, when you get your house, you you might like the tree, you might not like the tree, right? So um, it just depends. Like sometimes if you want that little bit of greenery, you could keep the greenery. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna cut 
so that I keep, not all of you guys are gonna have all this extra little bit of greenery too. It just depends what you have. Like to keep those trees on there, like you could keep them, but I wouldn't necessarily keep them where they are. So I'm just gonna cut the tree here. I'm sorry, the house out. Beat stamping off. Oh, it sure does. Yep, it gives you like a second or a third strength look without wasting a lot of ink. So I'm gonna cut my house. I know everybody's gonna have different houses, right? So just, I'm gonna keep, in this case, I'm gonna keep that greenery over there on this house. I kept a little greenery over here, but there's nothing on the side. Now, if you have these awesome trees here that are part of your paper, some of you might have these trees, what you could do is cut them, if you got trees, and include them in your card. So let's just see here what this looks like. I might find a little spot to put this tree I might not, but I've got a little tree there. Um, I also noticed on here, I've got these trees. I'm gonna cut them just so we can play around with them because you know, some of you might have them and instead of throwing it away, like here, there's a little tree that was on the scrap of that guy. You might use that. Um, you can even put it on the inside potentially. So let's, we're gonna just cut them out for, just for fun and see once what we can do with them. So instead of just throwing it right in the garbage, we're just gonna see if we can tie it into the card somewhere. And we're gonna cut up just a little bit and bring it back down. Okay, so I've got some extra little trees from my designer paper. Um, you guys may or may not have that as a reminder. Just depends on what you got for your designer paper. Um, we do need to do a little more on this. So this is um, actually the blue here, you can see there's a blue sky here. That blue is done by a blending brush. So I'm gonna take, and let's see the inside, I didn't do it there, but I might. You're gonna need a balmy blue ink pad and you're gonna need a blending brush. And we've done this a time or two. Um, if you're new to this, these are blending brushes. And what you do is you pick up the ink with your blending brush and then you're going to blend color onto your white piece of paper. Now, if you don't have a blending brush, you could use a sponge. You could also use a sponge dauber. And ultimately what you're doing is you're gonna add this blue, which makes it look like sky. So if you can see the difference here, one's got the blue on it now and one's got um, nothing, that's the inside. But you wanna make sure you go down low enough so that your blue is behind the grass. And so I'm gonna do just a couple more little swooshies on here just to get a little bluer. Now that's gonna be for the outside. And I didn't do it on my sample, but I'm gonna do it on this one for this card. I'm actually gonna do the same thing on this one, but I'm only gonna have it come down just a little bit, a little bit. So we're just putting a little blue at the top for that, just to make it look like there's a little sky going on in there. And that's it for the balmy blue. The only time that we're using the gray, you could have smoky slate, you could use basic gray, you could use gray granite, it's really whatever you want. Um, there's birds. <laughs> now, we talked about this earlier in class that the birds come from in the moment. And I literally chopped them off of this stamp uh, with my scissors. I just cut them straight off. And now I use this, these birds for this stamp set or for when I want birds on cards. So. I'm gonna put my um, grass down and I'm gonna put my house down. So I'm gonna leave that grass on here. That is part of the house because I think it actually works in nicely. And then I'm gonna figure out where do I want my sun. So in this case, I put the sun on the left, but on this one, I think I'm gonna put my sun on the right like that because there's a little bit more room because of the way the, the slope of my house is. And then I think I'm gonna put my birds over on this other side. So I'm just trying to lay this out to figure out where could my birds fit in? And you gotta be very careful because you don't wanna get halos on your birdies. And so I'm gonna put my birds up in the sky. You know, having them go in front of the, the sun is kind of cool too, but I think I'm gonna put them over here like that. Perfect. So then on the inside, there's a stamp and it says, welcome. <laughs> you guys can see it, it says welcome. Where did I find that? That's a good question, right? So welcome comes from Happier than happy. And I need to go grab it because it's not, I didn't pull it out. So. Let 
this Happier Than Happy has a welcome in it. And so I'm going to pull that out and use that because this would be a great... The people are moving. Shauna just moved. Jeannie Parker just moved. A Carissa just moved. I've got lots of people in my life <laughs> who just moved. And so it would be awesome to send welcome to um, like to the new your new house with these cards. So so I'm going to practice on the back side of this because I, I know that I needed a little help on that one just to see. So I'm going to practice here on the back side. Oh, good. Okay. And then I'm going to go straight over to here. So these would be a great welcome to your new home card. And then we're going to put the birds up in the sky over here. There. All right. So I think that's it for what we've got for stamping. And so now I think we can get a little bit glue happy. Now the trees, we, I did cut these trees out and I thought, well, where could they go? Um, this one could actually go in the bottom here on the inside. And I'm trying to think if we could fit, oh, you know what? These could probably fit in over here. If you guys, if you guys have trees, thanks, Linda. If you have trees and you want to figure out where to fit them in, definitely try to, to fit them in somewhere. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little guy on the inside here and put it right there. Okay. So I've got to, I'm going to save, you know, one of the trees, you know, and actually I think that's a little high. So I'm going to move it down <laughs> and hi, Carmen McNamara. If I said that right, I hope I did. Um, so I'm also going to pop up my house on the top here. And we're going to put a little bit of adhesive on the grass on the background here, the back side. I didn't go up too high because I want to sneak my trees in there when I know where I want them. And then I'm going to take the dimensionals off and we're going to put a little bit of glue along the bottom edge here. And then our house is going to sit on the hill here. Now the trees, well, let's do the sun first. Let's put our sun down and I am gonna trim off a little bit of the sun. So I'm gonna put it right in the top corner here and I'm gonna bring it just till I can't see that little peak there. Okay, so now that's set. You're gonna grab your scissors and then you're gonna cut off the edges like that. So that's how I got the sun like that. And now the trees are going to get tucked in here. We're going to tuck them in there. So I actually think I'm going to cut off a little of the bottom of that one. Now, you guys might not have trees. You notice on my other card, I don't have trees. But because of the designer paper that I have here, I ended up with some trees. So you might have trees and find a spot to tuck them in. And I think they look really cool back there. Yay! <laughs> I salvaged the trees and used them. All right. So then... We're gonna do a little bit of gluing so we can glue. Let's get glue happy. So we're going to do glue, 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 <laughs> glue, and gotta trim the little tree down here. Awesome, and then glue. So got four things that we're gonna, hi Ethel King. Got four things we can glue here. And then here's this. All right, so let's get these all on first. So this one, no rhyme or reason, I don't think. So I'm just going to put that on the inside. So this is mint macaron with navy. All right. And then I'm going to put my birds on the front over here. Like that. Okay. And then our arm, make sure you get this right. The arm opens up with the fold on the right. And so the little house goes on the top like that. So we really made this that, you guys, if you don't have that bird stamp, you could take a pen or a black marker and make birds by just making little swooshies, right? You can make birds by going like that <laughs> with a marker, right? So you can make your own birds without having to have stamps. And then we've got this on the inside here. All right, and now you're gonna flip this over in the back side the other little house on the remaining DSP could be on the inside. Thanks, Janice. Well, I'll check that out real quick, see if we can make it work. Um, and then here's this. So what I'm gonna do is I like to do these at the same time. 
So I kind of snuck that in there, but it's liquid glue, so you've got a little wiggle room. And so we've got this here, like that. And I did notice that when I cut, when I put my designer paper down, I have this bigger um, blue margin, and I don't want to see that so much. I It looked a little big to me, but it looked like it was right. If that happens to you guys, I did make sure that, you just have to, if I have to trim a little off, I'm just going to trim a little off here to make it a little bit closer. Yeah, I ended up cutting off like an eighth of an inch, and then that matched better. Perfect. So you might have to do that. I'm not quite sure um, how that worked, if that you guys have to do that too, but you have to trim it a little bit. Just trim off the edge if you need to. Now, we talked about a little house over here. Ha! Huh. Yes, okay. Janice's idea was to use this other little house. So you guys may or may not have another little house. Some of you might. I know that a bunch of you got, because I didn't feel like cutting houses off and like throwing them in the garbage, right? So I put them in your kits. So if you did end up getting, uh, oh, Sandy, you said the guard is gorgeous. Thank you. Um, if you end up getting a second little house, you can definitely. Beth, nice cards, one of my favorite DSP. I know the state DSP is so pretty. It's so much, it was so versatile. Okay, so this house looks perfect in here. So we're gonna put that little guy <laughs> and not waste it. And we're just gonna glue it on the inside here and put it right in the corner. Nice. We got a tree over on the other side. We got the house on the left. Now, if you have this designer paper at home and you wanna put some more on the inside or the inside, you could definitely add some more layers to this card. And the other thing that you have in this card, um, what we chose to do, we used the rustic metallic dots and you either got too big and a small or too small and a big. And we thought that, that the bronze looked really nice. And what you can do is you got, you put, just put them on the card. We just put two up here. Oh, it didn't even pull off. Ha ha. Hang on. Let's get that guy off of here. So we got two up here and we'll put a little small guy. I don't know, right about there. So you've got three of them in your kit and you can do that with them what you want. If you don't want to put them on and save them for a different project, you could do that too. But we thought that the rustic pulled out the brown from the branches. And so... A lot going on, you guys, but all you really needed was some blue ink for a sky, some birds on this one, and then um, a sentiment on the inside. There was some foliage on the background, but you could have left it if you don't have anything that would work. Um, my house is still wiggling around, so we'll get them all situated. And so there, we have our third card finished for Let's Just Stamp. So if you guys, again, um, if you have any other little trees, if you want to use them for anything, you can. And let's see what we got here. So we're going to bring them all in. <laughs> so you can see that they're different. Like the cards are pretty much the same, but they have different houses. And just depending on what you have for trees, you know, put your sun on one side or put it on the other side. Oh, Lynn said it was a fun card. Yeah, we love our fun folds, don't we? I know there's not a lot of room to sign on here, but if that bothers you, you could always take a piece of white paper and mat it five and a quarter by four and put it on the back. And then you can write your love note back there to whoever... Um, you're sending your card to. So this is what we've got, you guys. We've got our Ringed with Nature. Um, we've got the Christmas card. We've got a fun fold on the left with the house. We tried to make sure that you didn't have to have the stamps to make these cards because if you had anything else that was interchangeable for a flower, for like for the poinsettia, that would be perfect. And this one, we did the die cutting in there. So if you don't have the mushrooms, you could still make it look with mushrooms. Um, yeah, very, very versatile. So again, that was using the stamp set was ringed with nature. Um, let's pull this in so you can see them all. Got a lot going on here. So we've got your ringed with nature is the stamp set. And then we've got our three cards. So again, you didn't really need to have the dies for any of these. Be careful with the wood. I was thinking back to this, you guys. You gotta be really careful with this wood element. You definitely have to be very ginger with it that you don't break it. Um, don't kind of push on it. Um, this one is a little bit bulky. Some people ask about mailing. Um, Cindy likes the poinsettia best and the house and mushroom cards are close. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, I always love to ask you guys, what is your favorite one? So Cindy's is this one. Um, this one, you guys, is a little thick. So if you do go to mail this, it's going to be more, like they say, if it's a quarter inch, um, how they do that is there's on your thing here if it can't fit through this slot right here there's a slot and this is about a quarter inch 
like it fits up to here, right? But then you've got all this height right here. It's not really going to go through. So you got to be careful mailing that. Um, it might be best to give this one as a hand deliver or figure out a way that this um, wood element is flat on it. So hi, Susie Snow. Barb says the house card is her favorite. So good. Well, I hope you guys got some good ideas out of these card kits um, for this class. I will, um, I will be putting the... Um, I do have a PDF tutorial for it. I will be um, making it available if anybody wants it. It won't be in my online store, but you can always reach out to me if you are curious. Um, you can always get it free with a purchase or you can pay for it. Um, just reach out to me if you do want it. I can just send it to you via email if, um, if anybody wants to buy it from me. So uh, Donna likes all three cards. That door says the house card is a favorite. Cool, cool. All right, so these cards, what I'll do is they will be prizes for somebody who commented on this video throughout the course of the video. Um, I do have the four cards from Abigail Rose, and I'll announce those winners now. So we'll drop down here and do the drum roll. Brrr. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. You guys, this class was back in August, probably the third week. So if you missed it, um, you're seeing these cards now and you want to watch the video, it's always available in the replay. Um, and so we've got here the best wishes goes to Debbie Standeffer. Debbie, woohoo, you're the winner of this card. Yay. Uh, da -da -da, drum roll, please. This card goes to Cheryl Possident. Yay. Hi, Philly Sinto. Um, so, Cheryl, you're the winner of this card. Uh, the happy birthday, happy birthday goes to da -da -da -da. Uh, Jennifer Jones, you are the winner of this one. So Jennifer, I have your address. Cheryl, I have your address. Um, Debbie, it's been a while. <laughs> you might want to send me your address. <laughs> um, so I have it handy. Um, Lynn says, the house and Christmas cards are her favorites. Pauline says, love how these cards turned out. Going to have to give them a try as I have the set and the paper. Woohoo, yes, Pauline, definitely. Uh, hi, Lisa Kurtz. Uh, she loves them all. Linda, I have been working on cards while listening to you. Awesome. You guys are multitasking then. I love it. So last but not least, this one goes to da -da -da, Jessica Rodriguez. Jessica, I need your address. I don't have your address. So um, Jessica and Debbie, if you could send me your addresses. And then I definitely have Jennifer's and Cheryl's, so I know where to send those. So congratulations to those lucky ladies. And we are going to also be doing a door prize drawing. So how I do it for class. Oh. Things were falling. <laughs> uh, Eddie says, beautiful cards. Thank you. Um, so for class, I had nine people that placed orders to get this class for free. And so when people place orders using my host code to get the class for free, it allows me to get the supplies that I need for classes. And I use those supplies throughout the, the time period of the catalog. And then what happens is when the catalog retires, I have extra supplies. And so those are what I go to my vault and I, I call it my vault, my stamp and supply list. And those are the prizes that I, I give out for the classes. And I always include them in the next class that you get with me. So I don't send them out. You guys, shipping adds up <laughs> really fast. And so I've always made it a deal that I do the door prizes, but I add them into your next class that you get from me. Um, and so I have cards waiting here until you take a class with me. And then I, I put a prize in with that if you win the door prize. So thanks, Pauline. All right. So I got to grab my phone. And so we're going to do a random number generator. And so um, we're going to pick somebody via random number generator. And they will get a prize from me when they take their next class. Or if it's a, a local person to me, they would. I just set it on the counter for them. All right. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're very welcome, Randy. All right, so nine people. I'm going to put the camera down. We're going to hit the word generate. When I hit generate, it's going to pick a number. Number five. Number five is Penny Powell. Penny Powell, you are the lucky winner of the door prize for this class. And Penny Powell, you have a package going out right away. That was a lot of peas. Um, you have your ink, paper, scissors I have setting here. And you also, I believe, have game night. So you're going to get your prize right away. So I'll make sure to include that. And awesome. Thanks for sharing, Doris. That just popped in that you shared. You guys, I really appreciate it when you share my videos. Um, it helps me to share what I love with more people. And I love how I'm helping and inspiring and um, helping you be creative. Uh, so you can share that with those people around you. So whoop, whoop to Patty. Yay. Whoop, whoop. You got it, girl. All right. So... What else, you guys? That was a great class. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, 
we will be, so this is your tip Tuesday, guys. Just a reminder, I'm not going to be live again to do a special tip Tuesday for today. You, This is a two hour class. <laughs> so I'm looking at, hopefully you picked up lots of tips and tricks throughout watching it. I hear people always, um, they say they've been stamping for a long time and sometimes they'll be watching and they'll be like, oh, I didn't think about doing that. So um, awesome that I could um, do this as my class tip Tuesday for you today. I will be live on Thursday uh, for you guys for the monthly class. Uh, always reach out if you need anything. Uh, if you want to get signed up for a class, the easiest way is to message me any which way um, to get you signed up. And we'll go from there, figuring out if you want to pay for it or place an order. Um, what else? Um, benefit, working on those cards this week. My goal is by Friday to have the benefit cards finished. They are started. Uh, Cheryl uh, worked, started on them. And so we've got the first pass on all of them. And so the goal is by Friday to have those cards all ready for you so that we can do a special live for you sometime um, in the next, you know, by the end of the weekend, showing all the uh, benefit cards. Um, and then uh, Kelly will have a Technique Thursday for you on Thursday. I have in-person celebration, celebration, um, basically uh this Wednesday and Sunday. And then you guys, I've got a double header on Saturday with Rustic Harvest and the monthly class. So <laughs> took off a little bit, but it's full steam ahead like normal with lots of card classes this week. So uh, I look forward to spending more time with you throughout the week. And Carmen said, enjoyed the class. So, yay, you're very welcome. So, all right, you guys, if I miss anything, I'll catch you later, but don't forget to do your mystery card. You have until tomorrow night and we'll do the drawing for that Thursday night and then I'll share my mystery card as well. So Kelly said she had a lot of fun doing the mystery card with you guys on Thursday night. So um, yeah, that's it, I think. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you and you enjoy the your rest of your week, you guys. Love you, bye.